Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining me. On this episode of Build Drone, we're going to build price and option a 2019 Ford F-350 Lariat Super Duty Crew Cab. Before we do that, I just want to remind you that if you find this build and price review helpful, informative, or entertaining, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you're in the market for a 2019 Ford F-350 Super Duty, I wrote a complete review on my website, buildpriceoption.com. I put a link in the description below. The 2019 Ford F-350 Super Duty is a ridiculously capable heavy-duty truck. Properly equipped and using a gooseneck hitch, it can tow up to 32,000 pounds. That's 16 tons. If you don't tow, well, a regular cab two-wheel drive F-350 with dual rear wheels can handle up to 7,630 pound payload. That's the weight of about three Ford Fiesta hatchbacks. There simply aren't that many people who haul that much stuff, though, however. But if you're one of those people who need this much truck, this is the truck you need. Ford's Super Duty line of heavy-duty pickups, like Little Brother F-150, uses a body that is mostly made from aluminum. That knocks the truck's weight down and keeps the effective payload high. Ford would like to point out that the body isn't made of just aluminum, however, but of a military-grade aluminum alloy material that's built to last. It's not a beer can. Beyond the body that comes in regular, extended, and crew cab configurations, the F-350's frame has been redesigned around larger, high-strength steel frame rails and cross members for additional strength. And the engines are a gasoline-burning 6.2-liter V8, making 385 horse, or a 6.7-liter turbo diesel, knocking out 450 horse, and a ground-pounding 935 pound-feet of peak torque. Both are backed by a six-speed automatic transmission and feed either a two- or four-wheel drive system. Even in stripped-down regular cab XL trim, the F-350 includes features such as locking tailgate, dual glove boxes, and a driver information display. From there, the range moves through XLT, Lariat, King Ranch, Platinum, and Limited trim levels, with the equipment levels rising at each step and the wheel diameter is growing as well. At the top of the range, the F-350 King Ranch, F-350 Platinum, and F-350 Limited models feature large luxury car cabins and what happen to be heavy-duty pickup trucks. To accommodate a wide variety of towing and hauling situations, the F-350 is available in different wheelbases and different length beds, and the options list is very long, including work-oriented and play-oriented equipment, such as a visual guidance system for, re for reversing while hooked to a trailer, blind spot monitoring, and several onboard entertainment systems. All right, let's jump into this review of the 2019 Ford F-350 Super Duty. My favorite truck is hands down my favorite truck. Got to get in a diesel, got to be an F-350, even though I don't need an F-350. And then you got to jack it up way in the air because I like lifted for trucks. I'm going to put a picture up to one that I really think looks really, really hot. Now, that's the kind of Ford F-350 Super Duty I need in my life. All right, so let's move on. Let's take a look at the colors. Let's take a look at these colors. Look, we can mouse around. <laughs> mouse around. We can turn this thing around via the mouse, get a good look. This is, looks like the crew cab with the short wheelbase. I'm sorry, the short bed. I'm sorry. Uh, looks really nice. All right, let's take a look. This color here. Let me pull this down a little bit. It's called Oxford White. They also do the Mustang. The Ford Mustang also comes in Oxford, Oxford White. Um, this is the Magnetic Gray, I believe. Let me see. Yeah, it just says Magnetic, actually. Then we have the Blue Jeans is a color. And then there's the Race Red. And then there's the uh, Ingot Silver. Then we have the Ruby Red. It's a little bit darker than the Race Red. White Platinum, and let's see, what does that look like compared to the Oxford? I don't know, they look a little, I don't know, the, the, white, the white Platinum looks a little richer, it looks a little richer. Um, then there's the Stone Gray, there's a Magma Red, they got three shades of red, this, that's really a burgundy. And then that Agate Black, and then they have a Silver Spruce. I'm not really crazy about any of the colors, so... It's going to kind of be a wash when we come to picking our color for ours. I'll just kind of randomly, well, 
Uh, not really randomly pick a color, but I won't really spend a whole bunch of time on it. So those are our colors. Um, let's move on to the gallery. Let's just take a quick look at these photos. There's usually some information down below these photos. Yeah, this one says it's just a Super Duty Lariat shown in uh, ruby red. So basically, I just want to look through these photos really quick. And then I want to start looking at the features. I want to start learning and reading about the features of the F, uh, of the Super Duty, right? Because they're really going to give us the, the Super Duty lineup features, all its technology, safety, power, engines, all that kind of stuff. I want to learn about all of that. And then we're going to build and price our F-350 Lariat. I like the Lariat because it's the first model getting you into the leather, all right? It's the first model into the leather. All right, so speaking of leather, here's a Platinum with leather seating our leather will not look like that uh here's a super duty lariat with leather right it's not the most fancy right when i mentioned in the beginning when i said the ones that have luxury car interiors i started at king ranch and up not lariat and up i still like the lariat the lariat's still a good truck with leather the other ones start to get more luxury which is nothing wrong with that but the price tag goes up a lot so that's this is the cheapest way into the lar uh, into the leather is a lariat Here's an XLT Super Cab, also nice, also nice. There's the twin panel moonroof. What do they have to say about that? I don't know much. It's optional. We know that. And, yeah, now we're back to the beginning. Okay, let's move on. Let's see if there's other photos. If not, then we'll get right into the features. Okay, so apparently those photos were just the, the tip of the iceberg. So here's a Platinum that's saying that they come standard with the navigation system. You know, I'm not going to usually read this information, I don't think, this time, because by the time we get over to the features... The features are going to, when we get to the features, they're going to mention some of this information. It's going to just sound redundant. So what we're going to really do is we're just going to look at the photos, right? Well, navigation system, uh, the twin panel moonroof, which we already saw. We already saw the Super Duty Lariat interior. What we didn't see is a six factory installed upfitter switches and overhead console that you can hook up for various things, lights and whatnot. Uh, folding lockable underseat box. We've got the lockable underseat storage box and crew cab rear seat. We have Ford Super Duty XL interior. Was that a vinyl interior? If it is, it's still nice. Oh, is that the what is that? An XLT? Oh, XL. Look, it doesn't have any, it doesn't have rugs. I just noticed the rubber floor mat or the whole rubber floor. Here's the platinum seating. We already saw that photo. Here's the eight-inch what they call productivity productivity screen. That's pretty nice. So you've got your analog gauges, your traditional analog gauges. Here, here's your tachometer. I'm sorry, here's your speedometer. Here's your tachometer. Then you have like a digital, I wouldn't call it LCD, but it's a digital display. Probably has, um, probably has a digital speedometer and all that. These look to be digital, these gauges for your oil pressure, uh, water. I'm sorry, yeah, coolant, fuel, and well, turbocharger, boost pressure. Yeah, your boost pressure. What here for your last photo? It's the Super Duty shown in the platinum interior, which is not the highest trim level. The limited is. Okay, so I think we saw enough of the gallery photos. I want to jump into the features. Let me show you what all features there are because they have some headings. So they've got durability features, which we're about to go over right now. There's capability, power, and productivity. So there's four modules really to go through, starting with durability. All right, what toughness means in big pickups. Today's Ford Super Duty is the toughest heavy-duty pickup we've ever built. We started by cutting body weight with high-strength military-grade aluminum alloy. We then invested some of that weight savings where it really counts in stronger axles, beefier steering, and chassis components, and a fully boxed frame built over 95% high-strength steel. The result is Super Duty that boasts class-leading payload and towing. There you go. There was a better shot of that vehicle if it was bugging you that I was having it cut off. Now, it's not cut off. We won't read it, but again, here they're showing it, and we kind of looked at this a little bit at the, at the beginning in the intro. They're just talking about that high-strength military-grade aluminum alloy body. It's a big deal. They've invested a lot of time and money into that, and that's how they were able to shave weight and increase performance and put that money back somewhere else to make it a better, tougher truck. They're saying that it's also dent and ding resistant and not subject to red rust corrosion. Okay, so fully boxed, high strength steel frame. The fully boxed frame, built, uh, built of over 95% high strength steel with up to 10 cross members, is 24 times stiffer than the previous design. The frame is designed to minimize flexing and twisting while maximizing strength and tor or torsional rigidity. 
and serves as the foundation for Super Duty achieving the highest payload and tow ratings in its class. Must be really nice to drive a 2019 F-350, just Super Duty chassis in general, huh? Solid front axle and the 4x4. Like the fully boxed high-strength steel frame, the axles are stronger in today's generation of the Ford Super Duty. And the Super Duty utilizes a solid front axle on all 4x4 models, okay? The solid axle provides strength and weight-bearing capability for operating an aftermarket front-end uplift like a heavy snow plow. So you need that heavy-duty front-end. You know, you got a lot of weight over the front of this vehicle. That, that front-end's got to be, well, super tough. And so that's what they're saying. The front-end, if you got a 4x4, it's got a solid front axle. All right, what's advanced Advanced track with RSC and trailer sway control. Super Duty comes with standard advanced track with roll stability control and trailer sway control on both single and dual rear wheel models. Both systems use gyroscopic sensors and apply a combination of reduced engine power and selective wheel braking to help maintain the stability of the vehicle and the trailer in tow. All right, that sounds like a mouthful. But it sounds like a lot of cool technology, especially for somebody, if you're not mm, an experienced person towing something, but yet you're out there on the road, you want to do it, you don't want to hurt anybody. This is good technology. I like it. It's not a, ah, ha, ha, you got to use that technology kind of thing. I think it's great that it's available. Largest brakes in class, that's if you're on an F450, right, which is not even one we even talked about. But the F450 model has the largest Four-wheel anti-lock brake rotors in its class, and for a very important reason. You want them to provide the sure stopping power you expect when you're out on the job hauling tons of whatever it is that's riding along with you behind the cab. I know that's right, huh? Here they're saying they've got over 12 million miles of testing under real and simulated conditions, right? And that's why these heavy-duty trucks have extraordinary performance and capability. The F-350 Super Duty. Engineer for the extremes. Super Duty was tested at temperatures from minus 20 to 120 degrees. Powertrain tests replicated going up to 6 degree grade over 500 miles. Super Duty was also subjected to four post frame twists, gravel, dust, water, brine, mud bass, and even intentionally tested with worn or broken parts. Such extreme conditions often went far beyond what you would likely encounter on your toughest of jobs. Okay, so we got through durability. Let's talk about the capability of the Ford F-350 Super Duty. All right, let's get into that. Here's a beautiful shot of this truck out at the work site. Amazingly, it's around all this mud, and it's perfectly spotless. It's just now getting dirty. Amazing. Just now getting dirty. All right, so it's got best-in-class conventional towing. The Ford Super Duty has a maximum conventional towing capacity of 21,000 pounds. Higher than any other heavy-duty pickup. That's significant, I think. Super Duty features a strong, fully boxed frame made of over 95%. Yeah, we got that. It's got a hefty axle, suspension, and driveline components, plus a factory-installed weight-carrying hitch built into the frame. Over here, on our right, the fifth wheel and best-in-class gooseneck towing. That's where you put the hitch in the, in the bed. Need to tow the really big loads? Hitch up with the Ford Super Duty and either it's and, and either it's maximum 27 5 pound fifth wheel or best in class 35,000 pound gooseneck tow rating. Okay, the fifth wheel gooseneck hitch prep package can set you up for an exceptional capability. Among the features is a fifth wheel and gooseneck substructure attached to the frame, factory installed on 4x4 model only, compatible with the fifth wheel hitch. Kits and gooseneck hitch kits offered through the factory and Ford Custom Accessories. So they got you covered when it comes to towing. And I don't know a lot about trucks, so I'm making this a statement as a person who doesn't know a lot, a lot about trucks. But it sounds like to me that they're they they're well above and beyond the other manufacturers. I've done a few other um, trucks. I've got a whole truck playlist, as a matter of fact. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that truck playlist up. I encourage you to go jump over there. I've got I've got some. A variety of different trucks over there that I've done some building prices on. So best in class, um, maximum payload plus conventional and gooseneck trailer towing, but it's not all that. So they're just basically saying that there's a the Super Duty has a 43,300 pound gross combination weight rating. All right now, I'm not going to say I necessarily know all that stuff because I'm not into the towing. I just like trucks. 
No, I don't know everything there is to know about trucks. I just like trucks. I think they're cool. And it's got a best-in-class payload, right? Reducing body weight by up to 350 pounds and making the frame 24 times stiffer. Uh, together, these contribute to the 7,640-pound 7, maximum payload rating that's the best-in-class. So that's pretty cool. And then they start talking about their LED box lights, class-exclusive remote tailgate release, power-locking tailgate, and class-exclusive tailgate step. Right? I thought there was a step like either on this corner – Maybe it's on the opposite corner where that guy is over here. In one of the photos, they showed it like right on the corner of the bumper. Here's that trailer reverse guidance, the available class exclusive. Trailer reverse guidance enhances visibility via cameras in the side view mirrors and visual guides in the center dash screen. You get a clear rear view of where the trailer is going with the guidelines changing with the movements of the steering wheel. Yeah, so, yeah, that's awesome. What they're basically saying is, yeah, the, the guides change so you can kind of see your trajectory into wherever you're backing up. I don't like those systems where you've got the backup camera and it shows the guidelines, but when you turn the wheel, your steering wheel doesn't, or the guidelines don't turn. It kind of, well, to me, throws me off. I'd rather the guidelines not be there then altogether. So the, it's a class exclusive. Sounds like a lot of class exclusives. Uh, trailer tire pressure monitoring. No longer do you have to get out of the cab to check if the tires on the trailer you're towing are properly inflated. The available class exclusive trailer tire pressure monitoring system makes this information available on an in-dash display. I wonder how that works. What kind of trailer? Is there specific trailers? How does that all work? I'm curious to know. Here's another class exclusive. They call it adaptive steering. Right? This system adjusts the steering ratio in response to... Uh, vehicle speed. It adapts automatically to the driving situation, whether you're doing a low speed maneuver, like parking or backing up a trailer, or traveling at cruising speed on the highway. All right. At lower speeds, excuse me, the steering ratio increases, requiring fewer turns of the steering wheel and less effort and less steering effort. At higher speeds, the steering ratio gradually decreases, producing a steering feel that is firmer and more controlled. Yeah, you want to feel like you have a stiffer steering wheel. And where you where your little minute inputs don't make the car like make big giant sways back and forth. So sounds like it's got a, like a little sporty feel to the uh, sounds like that adaptive steering gives it a sporty feel. OK, we got through that. Let's talk about power. Let's talk about power. This is my favorite part. So let's let's start with the six point two liter gas engine. Right. We already know what it makes. It makes um, three hundred and eighty five horsepower. Was it and four hundred and thirty pound feet of torque? It's a lot. That's a lot. It's a pretty powerful gas engine. But what I'm really interested in, when I think truck, I think diesel, right? I don't want a gas engine truck. I want a diesel truck. This diesel makes a lot of horsepower. It makes 450 horse and 935 pound-feet of torque. Now, I know it's one major competitor. Um, it doesn't. Its major competitor does not make – it makes almost the same horsepower and torque, but not quite. So that's cool. The 6.7 liter – that's what engine we're going to put in our uh, truck today. Diesel engine exhaust braking. The 6.7 liter Power Stroke Turbo Diesel incorporates a driver activated engine exhaust brake. It restricts the turbocharger's exhaust flow to generate back pressure and slow the vehicle, providing greater control while traveling downhill, regardless of vehicle load or road grade. Nice. Also, because the engine brake helps minimize having to apply pedal pressure, brake fade and lining wear are reduced. Lowering the cost of maintenance. Three settings are available. On, off, and auto. That's hilarious. The auto setting modulates engine braking as needed to help maintain the speed you want based on accelerator and brake pedal use. I like that feature. I haven't seen it or read about it on any other truck that I've done. There's also adaptive cruise control with collision warning. It's an optional package. That slows you down as traffic ahead slows, then resumes the present speed when traffic picks back up. The collision warning brake support feature uh, precharges the brakes for a full responsiveness. If you don't react in time, it's integrated into the trailer brake controller for added security when you're towing a heavy load. Nice. That's pretty cool. There's a nice shot of it. Just a good work truck, right? Just steel wheels, everything. I just think that I think that truck also looks cool. I don't think what's the options probably aren't cool for me. But I think from the outside, it looks really cool still. That picture really symbolizes what they're going to talk about next, which is the Ford Torque Shift G6 Speed Automatic. The 6.2 liter gas V8 with the best-in-class tow features this particular engine, right? 
the automatic that's in the F-250, experiencing responsive power delivery and seamless smoothing, sh smooth shifting. The select shift features includes progressive range select for overdrive lockout plus full manual. Tow haul minimizes, that's a tow haul switch or, sh or something like that, minimizes gear hunting uphill and downhill. And downhill prevents upshifting and gaining speed, which I hate that, and reduces reliance on brake pressure to slow the vehicle. That's nice. Then they had another slide essentially saying the basically the same thing, talking about the same engine, same same transmission, but now just simply mentioning the the diesel option. So really the same transmission is in either gas or diesel, apparently. There's advanced fuel options for this vehicle, what it can run off a of natural gas or propane, apparently. All right, that's interesting. This is a this is a package that's available on the 6.2 liter V8. Obviously, it's not available on the diesel because the diesel runs off a of diesel. But the 6.2, you've got some options there, and it can run off of flex fuel, which is uh, running that E85 and all of that. And then it says the available 6.7 liter power stroke turbo diesel is B20 capable. So it can run 20% biodiesel and 80% petrol diesel. Okay, we got through all the other modules. The last one here. It's productivity. It says leave the hard stuff to the truck. So let's learn about the productivity and then move on. Up to seven available cameras. Optional cameras enhance visibility for on-site tasks. Four high definition, 180 degree to 360 degree cameras displaying all sides of the truck. Class exclusive trailer reverse guidance with visual guides along both sides for an enhanced view of where the trailer is going. And then there's a customer place rear trailer camera and center high mount stop lamp camera for viewing the pickup bed. Helpful when hooking up the fifth wheel or a gooseneck hitch. There's rear seat storage and a flat load floor. The Super Cab features rear hinge doors that open 170 degrees for easy loading. And the four door crew cab offers an available class exclusive again. They got a lot of them. Folding lockable under seat box, which is shown. That's right over here. For storing loose items or things you'd want to keep concealed and secure. Here's another class exclusive blind spot information system. Only in a Ford Super Duty will you find the available Bliss. That's uh, blind spot information with cross traffic alert and trailer tow. Bliss signals you on the outside mirror when a vehicle is detected in a blind spot and provides coverage for the truck you're driving as well as the trailer you're towing, towing if you're trailing a tour of a trailer towing a trailer of course the cross traffic alert feature for the truck only however can detect the vehicle passing behind you when you're slowly backing out of a driving uh out of a driveway or a parking spot so if you've got a trailer attached it cannot take that into consideration is what they're telling us here they're showing the utility of the bed you've got the led lighting you've got uh the boxed uh box box link and led box lighting all right, so let's learn about this because, honestly, I don't really know what it is. So let's just kind of read this whole thing. Ford Super Duty provides the tools you need to finish the job, any job, day or night. The available class exclusive box link system has structurally reinforced box sides for attaching and tying down various kinds of cargo. So it's just a place to hitch. There's just tie downs all in various key points, I guess. The four interface plates can be configured to accommodate many available Ford and aftermarket accessories from aftermarket storage bins to stowable loading ramps. The four lockable removable cleats provide additional locations to die, tie down cargo safely and securely. And that's not all. Working after the sunset, that's not a problem with the available LED lamps illuminating the box. All right, now I don't know how many there are. There's one here. There's probably one over here. Are there two up at the front too? So we so it's not a big shadow in the back. They don't really show, or and they don't say. Another class exclusive: the remote tailgate. It's probably pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it can lock, unlock, and lower the tailgate all hands-free. When activated, the tailgate gradually lowers to a flat position, available only with the Ford Super Duty. I kind of like that actually. Oh, they have a different kind of tailgate step. I was thinking about the one that was in the bumper. Ah, okay. There's a different kind of tailgate step. It's right off of the off the back, off the door, off the tailgate. I don't know what I was thinking. It says tailgate step, but I don't know. At any rate, 
we can see that there is a class exclusive yet again integrated tailgate step tailgate step with tailgate assist makes it easier to access all of the payload uh, in the super duty that you can carry right the step and handle are stowed inside the tailgate and can be easily accessed when needed now is this a standard option or is it standard or is it an option they don't say I don't see the word available and I don't see the word standard so I guess we'll find out a little bit further along I'm trying to remember that here's Ford sync 3 infotainment system this gets you all the goodies uh, and experience of the smartphone like touchscreen with impressive responsive responsiveness this will give you all your Apple CarPlay Android Auto this gives you all your tech you get the sync 3 you got all the tech that you probably need for most folks how do I know that? I know that because I've, I did a standalone video on the Sync 3. I'm going to go ahead and throw a video up to, or throw a link up to that right now. Okay, and what's Ford Pass Connect? With Ford Pass Connect, drivers and passengers can enjoy an, an in vehicle Wi Fi hotspot. It features a 4G LTE Wi Fi hotspot powered by ATT. Up to 10 devices can connect at once, and you can use Ford Pass to keep track of your Wi Fi data usage. Da 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 da. Or with your available plan, most people already have a hotspot on their own phone. So you can just skip over Ford Pass and the few little things that it offers, and you can just have people tether up to your phone. Now, I don't know what the benefit of running it in the car would be and, and, and running a, an additional uh, bill with AT&T over just turning on the Wi-Fi hotspot on your phone if you had it. What is the, what's the benefit of running it through the car? That's what I want to know. All right, so we got through all the features, and so the model that we're gonna that we're obviously building and pricing today, based on the title of everything, is the 2019 Super Duty F350 Lariat. So what I want to do real quick is I want to just kind of go over its specific features real fast, and then let's do our build and price review. The starting MSRP for this vehicle is forty-seven thousand three hundred and ten dollars, and it's got standard seating for six. Its key features are it's got these 20-inch chrome PVD alloy wheels. And that, I guess they come, it seemingly they're saying that it comes either on the 4x4 with the uh, short box, apparently. That is SRW, the short box. You have 250 with the overdrive trailer or the F350 with gas. So maybe we can't get these. Optional with chrome package on Super Duty F250 4x4 and F350 4x4 gas engine only chrome package has unique center ornament or on king ranch so now i'm not even sure if we're i guess we're getting these wheels i guess these are the standard wheels i'm assuming and then of course there's that sync three we just talked about that that's going to give you all the cool tech and then like i said the lariat is the cheapest model that gets the leather interior right forty seven thousand dollars is what it takes to get leather interior on an f-350 in 2019 right now let's talk about some of these other modules right there's exterior features interior features packages power and handling safety and specs and there might be a couple of more maybe warranty no that's it that's it so what I want to do is I want to quickly look at these real fast it's gonna give us some highlights and then by the time we go through a few of these modules I don't think we need to go through all of them then we'll jump and finish this up with our review our building price what I want to find out is what's standard interior features uh, air conditioning, dual zone, electronic automatic temperature control. So dual zone air conditioning. And an option is the rapid heat supplemental cab heater if you have a diesel. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, under comfort and convenience, they've got a whole, they're showing us all the different standard features. Now, I'm not going to read all these, but what I will say is if you want to catch all this, then you can simply pause the video and then you can read all this. I'm usually just looking for highlights. Rear view camera, reverse sensing sensor reverse sensing system it's got power adjustable pedals you got that Ford pass connect that we were just looking at we got the eight inch productivity screen uh, we got the multifunction steering wheel because there's got audio controls on the steering wheel and we can take a look at that and see that here that's a multifunction steering wheel there and also here's what I like to also get a heads up on what are the options so there's a lane keep assist alert option now what does it say the bliss system the blind spot monitor system is an option. Uh, remote start is an option. I think the remote start thing is a really cool thing. Those upfitter switches, those toggle switches, that's an option. The rear view camera, uh, lots of options. So 
the yeah the seemingly the lariat gets us into the leather but boy it sure does leave us it still leaves a lot of stuff to be gotten if uh if you really want to option it up nicely so but i didn't the next model up is the king ranch and so if you don't want to if you don't want that brown leather then you got to go up even higher to go grab a platinum and so yeah it starts to get expensive so i think the lariat's a good package oh check it out standard it's got the bno premium sound system by bang and olufsen right that's awesome that's awesome right bang and olufsen sound systems these are these are the engine up these are the sound system upgrades that you would get in an audi or a bmw or a porsche back in the oh 2013 2014 2012 right around those days that's what it was all about was the bang and olufsen and and it's still about that for some of them they still do high-end audios but sometimes they change names of who they use, right? But Bang & Olsen was all the range for a while. I am really, I think it's really hot that we can see it now in a truck. And it's standard equipment. Now, what's not standard is a navigation system. But I thought that always came standard with the Sync 3. Apparently not, unless we're just looking at this all wrong. But we'll find out on the ground when we get to our building price in just a few. All right, so packages. Let's talk. look at these packages for a minute. So it's got only one standard package called the Power Equipment Group. What's even in the Power Equipment Group? I don't even know. What's in that? Let's view the details. This group adds loads of convenience features, including accessory delay, manual manual folding, manual telescoping power glass trailer, tow, trailer, tow mirrors with heated glass, heated convex spotted mir spotter mirror, integrated clearance lamps, turn signals, perimeter alarm, power first row front seat, Windows with one touch up down, power second row uh, seat windows in the crew cab, power locks, power tailgate lock, remote keyless entry, and upgraded door trim panel. All right, so it's not it's not completely thin, but I mean it obviously leaves a lot to be desired there. But so but we needed to know what the power equipment group was, and then here's all the stuff that we can get. We can get a Lariat value package, ultimate package, there's a Chrome package, there's an FX4 off road suspension package. There's a snow plow prep package that we'll be skipping over. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. So we're gonna we'll look at that in detail here in just a few. Uh, let's see if there's anything else that's notable down here. For security, remote keyless entry and perimeter anti theft alarm is standard. Uh, the Ford My Key standard and secure lock anti theft ignition. They didn't explain that, but that too is standard. All right. Last thing we're going to do is look at these highlight specs. Not all the specs. That gets too long, too boring. Let's just look at the highlight specs. Fuel capacity. I guess it's dependent on what how you spec it out. Anywhere from a 29-gallon fuel tank to a 49, I'm sorry, 48-gallon fuel tank. You can do a 4x2 or 4x4. You can do that 6.2 gas engine or the 6.7 liter, 6 liter diesel. Right? We can see that the horsepower numbers. This is the horsepower number for the gas, and this is the torque number for the gas. This is the horsepower number for the diesel, and this is the torque number for the diesel. Um, the transmissions, there's the select G6 transmission, and there's the torque shift 6. So one has a G in front of it, one has a 6 in front of it. I'm not sure which one gets which. I'm going to assume that seeing that the, the gas model always seems to start on top, I'm going to assume that this might be the gas model transmission with the G in front of it. I'm not really sure. Here's our wheelbases and regular cab, short wheelbase and crew cab, our maximum conventional towings. Again, you can always um, pause this video if you want to catch these numbers real fast. Their standard warranty is a three-year, 36,000-mile bumper to bumper. Their powertrain warranty, five-year, 60,000-mile. And the diesels, it's five-year, 100,000-mile. Right? Diesels just run, huh? All right, so... We looked at all the highlights. We learned about all the features. We looked at the colors. We, we talked about all there is to talk about. Now there's only one thing left to do. Let's go do our building price of our F-350 and see what's up. Okay, so first thing we need to do is come over here and do our all our configurations. We want a 350. I want the crew cab. I want the six and three quarter bed. Oh, single. Oh, that's what the SRW single rear wheel dual rear wheel. Sorry. For all you guys that saw me saying, I don't know what that is, and you were like shaking your fist thinking, you know. All right, I want the single single rear wheel. I just had to see it. Uh, wheelbase, I'm not really sure what the wheelbases should be. What the standard is, I'm not really sure. Let me find out. 
All right, well, I'm not really sure about the wheelbases. So if one of you guys that's watching this, would you want to break down some wheelbase information and why you might want a 176 versus a 142 and what you'd be doing with that versus the 142, etc. Happily, please leave a comment below. So I'm just going to I'm just going to go right in the middle. I'm going to pick 160 cuz I'm just not really sure. Just not really sure what the differences are. So that's the whole thing with the wheelbase. And I know I don't want the XL, right? We're going to do the Lariat because the Lariat was our first one into leather, right? Sync 3 leather 8-inch LCD productivity screen. We're going to configure this one. Okay, we're automatically at $50,000, okay? Up from $47,000. All right, so we've got that. We can close the configuration tab and open up the paint tab. What color did I want? I said that I wasn't crazy about any of these colors, and that's true story. I'm not crazy about any of these colors. I don't think I want the – well, actually, you know what? Actually, I, I changed my mind. I'll take the truck in black. I want to take the truck in all black. We'll take the truck in black. Our secondary color will be no secondary color. Let's do that. Let's move on to powertrain. The powertrain, I do not want that gas engine. I want the $9,100 diesel option. That puts us just under $60,000 now. All right. And I want a 4x4. Four four. I want, and that's going to give us the solid front axle as well. Okay. So, yeah, remove the crew cab single rear wheel option 4x2. Yeah, got it. See, now I know SRW. I feel so happy now. Now we're already way up into $63,000, right? We haven't even done anything yet. Uh, transmissions, I think there's only one option on the transmission. No. There's the heavy-duty six-speed automatic transmission with select shift. And what's this? Oh, that's with the gas. All right, never mind. So there's only one option. As far as the locking axle ratio, again, here's the deal. I don't know enough about what's the difference between a 331, a 355, and a 373. No, I don't want to talk to a chat representative. I don't know what the, enough about the differences to say, yes, I want to select this particular one, and here's why. So I'm just going to stick with the standard uh, included limited slip ratio, that's why. All right, let's move on to packages. And let's find out a little bit of information about this stuff. I was reading some information about this gross vehicle weights package and all that. And again, I don't really know what about any of that. That's for guys that are getting into the towing and, and how much weight they're pulling around and all the restrictions out on the roads and all that kind of stuff and whatnot. We don't even get into that. I just want to build a cool truck that we're just going to roll around in. Now, we can't do the alternative fuel capacity because, well, that's only available on the gas engine stuff. We don't need the camper package. I can tell you that much right now. The chrome package, that's $1,100. Let's see if it changes the way this looks and if we could see it. Will we be able to see the chrome package when it changes? Let's see. Uh, yeah, sort of, kind of. Yeah, sort of, kind of. All right, I want the chrome package. Even though I'm going to be lift, putting a lift kit on mine and, and all those wheels are going to be gone. Uh, I'll take the FX4 off-road package. All right. So that's going to change. It's going to remove the 331 non-limited slip axle and add the 331 electronic locking axle ratio. Da, 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 da. Got that. And then there's the heavy service front end suspension package. That's for like if you want to put a plow on there and all that. We don't, we're not going to do that. The Lariat has a sport package. What is the Lariat sport package all about? That gives you a 6-inch e ebony black angular running boards, 20-inch ebony black painted. I don't really want the black wheel deal. I don't. So No, nah, I'm going to cancel the sport thing because I don't really want to do the black wheels. I don't really want to do the black. Well, actually, let's, let's take that back. I want to see what else is on there. Is there anything else that sounds interesting to me? Nope. Sure doesn't. The rest of it, none, none of that sounds interesting. For the $3,300 that it is, none of that sounds any good. So, no. Uh, what's the ultimate package, however? What's, what's here? This package adds numerous features to what is already a well-equipped truck. LED box lighting, including LED center high-mounted stop lamp, uh, power-adjustable pedals with memory, easy entry-exit memory seat, uh, driver seat feature, power-heated cool driver passenger seat with driver side memory, intelligent access with push-button start, Power telescoping tilt steering wheel, column with heat, memory and audio controls, power scope trailer tow mirrors with memory, remote start system, remote tailgate release, tailgate step, and voice activated net. Oh, okay. All right, we'll take the 
I liked the nav. I liked quite a few things in that. But by the time I got to navigation, I was I was I was already gonna get it. When it threw navigation in there, I was already sold. So I want the ultimate package. What's this? I we probably don't, can't get anything out of the value package. Yeah, LED box, lighting, power adjustable pedals, heated, cool. Yeah, that's all the stuff that's already bundled into the ultimate package too. What's the power equipment group? I can't remember what the power group equipment group is. Um, heated convex spotter mirror, integrated clearance lamps, one touch power up and down second row rear seat windows, all that kind of good stuff. Now, can we add that? Oh, we'd have to remove the Lariat package. No, so I guess the Lariat package might have that all bundled in. Whatever the case is, whether that's a yay or a nay, I don't want to remove the ultimate package for whatever that's going to give us. We don't need those snow plow prep packages. Do we want the tow technology package? Now, I'm already admitted many times anytime I do a truck video that I don't that I don't tow. I don't tow. However, that said, I might tow one day had I if I have a truck. And if I have a truck one day and I, I want it to be ready to tow. So yes, I want the tow technology package. Give me all of that. I want that. All right. Let's move on to the exterior. We can do what wheels do we have standard? We have these 18 inch uh, chrome PVD wheels, and then that's standard. We can do these ugly, these other wheels that are ugly. We're not doing those. Those black wheels I don't like. Then there's these 20s. Here's these other 20s. There's, and those look all right. Those look all right. I kind of like, I think I kind of like, I like these because this, this centerpiece is bigger. This is smaller. Let's do these 20s. What do we got to remove? Wow, you got to remove the diesel? Whoa, it's, that's too serious. Hold on a second. No. What happens if we select this one? Is this one for the diesel? Yes. Okay. That one's for the diesel. Now we got the diesel on the 20s. So if I don't turn around and do a lift kit right away, now I'm still rolling around looking good until I decide what lift kit and all that I want to put on my brand new truck that's, you know, $70,000. All right, there's your fifth wheel. We, I don't need that. Adaptive steering. We have it already. You can do the dual alternators or the dual extra heavy duty alternators now again this stuff is more than probably i need but what's the benefit of that right for all your towing and all of those things so when it comes time to do that i want my truck to be equipped for the job i want it to be equipped for the job right then what is there the aluminum cross bed tow box no, i don't need that the bed mat nope bed drop-in liner nope tough bed spray-in liner yeah why not and then you got the Bliss. Yep, I'll take the Bliss unless it's going to remove something. The box link, we have it. The high center mount stop lamp. I think we have that bundled in something else, didn't we? I'm almost positive. Yeah, we had it bundled in something else. There it is. All right, so we're going to cancel that. I figured I was just double checking by clicking that. I want the engine block heater. Uh, the exterior backup alarm. What is that all about? An exterior backup alarm is available on, you know, basically everybody. Yeah, let's let's do that too. T O O. Let's do that too. Um, the goose deck hitch thing, nah. Hood deflector. Hood deflector. I don't know. That's kind of cool. <laughs> it's kind of cool. I'm gonna skip it. Oh, I like those LED roof marker lights though. Now that I see those marker lights, yep, I'm gonna go ahead and get that hood deflector too. I don't even care. I don't even care. I gotta get that. LED warning strobes. I don't need those. <laughs> Uh, live drive power takeoff provision with mobile mode. I don't think we need that. Medium duty battery. I don't think I need that. With the power moonroof, let's go ahead and get that. The quad beam LED headlamp tail light package. Yep. Take it. The rear camera center high mount stop lamp. Do I already have that? Let's see. Nope. Oh, yeah. I guess we do. Maybe that's in the tow technology package. Yeah, it was, I think. Um, the rear camera, custom one. No, we don't need any of that. Rear window fixed glass, rear window power sliding, rear window privacy glass. We've got the remote. We've got the reverse sensing system. Do we need the splash guards? I'm not going to do the splash guards right now. Um, still, and all that. We've got the tailgate step. Let's throw our, our wheel locks in there. I like the wheel well liners myself, honestly. I think that's a nice clean look. Oops, not those. Yeah, front and rear. There they go. Front and rear for three and a quarter. Uh, what else do we have? We've got those uh, telescoping trailer mirrors. Two-tone paint we're not going to worry about. Six-inch angular chrome extended running boards. I think we have ones that are power. 
I think we got the power ones. Yeah, six inch an angular chrome step is what we have. Power deployable running boards. Those are kind of nice. Let's do the power deployable. But then we'd have to remove the wheels we want, the chrome pack. No, I'm not doing all that. See, that's why I hate all of this is that sometimes you can't you can't ever really build the truck that you want. Not necessarily. That's why you got to go aftermarket to get the rest of the things that you want. The tires, I'm just going to leave that alone. And let's move to summary. All right, so this truck started off life at what? What was this truck? The truck was $48,000, but by the time we even turned around and started building, it was already at $50,000. Now it's at $26,000, and, and then we added $26,000 more in all our options, and now we're sitting at $76,000. And so by the time I did put a lift kit and big wheels and tires, what would this thing cost? Ninety grand, ninety-five grand. I don't know what it costs to lift a truck. It all depends on how mild or wild you want to go to. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Let me see if I can actually print off this build summary. Because if I can print off this build summary and you like the way I built and priced this 2019 Super Duty F350 Lariat, then you can download the build summary in the description below. So let me check real fast and see if I can download it. Sometimes these things get glitchy. Okay, that's saved, so it's not glitchy. So I was able to save this. So if you like this build, you can download the build summary in the description below. Other than that, I've made it to the end of this. I would also suggest that if you're into this truck, go read my in-depth article that I did all on the 2019 Super Duty. So you can learn about all the trim levels. And I get into the deep details of everything. It's a nice pairing of the two. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Like I said, uh, if you've made it to the end, I really appreciate it. You're really, really awesome. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hang around. Come back. Watch more videos.